very happy holy and i'm sure a lot of you may be still in a colored mood with uh, the color not yet going off anyway we'll continue so this is our class on mechanics now in the last class we looked at the concept of shear force and bending moment diagram and for a simple case i showed you how shear force and bending moment diagrams were drawn how to write the expression for shear force and bending moment there has been a question which has been posed to me on my gmail account and once again i'd like to write this for benefits of people who have not seen this earlier this is my email id in case you have any doubts queries please don't hesitate to ask me and even if you have to ask something if there is a problem you have worked out you are not getting the right answer etc you can scan your effort and mail it to me on this and then whenever i have the time i'll go through it and get back to you now one of the questions which was asked was what i told you was the example which i took that had a loading like this there was a force of 20 kN from the support there was a force of 10 kN and then there was in fact this 20 was acting and we had a force by which was 50 kN and the other support was here 10 kN and we had a force of 40 kN acting like this so 40 and 20 kN were the forces which were acting and there were two supports which gave a force of by and dy as shown and all these distances were two each so basically we had a distance what we called ad ad was 6 meters this was b this was c ab was equal to bc was equal to cd equal to 2 meters so now the we solve this problem we drew the shear force in bending moment by taking sections from a so we located our reference point at a and then we drew the shear force and bending moment diagrams now the question which was asked to me was can we start from d instead of starting from point a instead of starting from the left section can we take the right section and the answer is yes there is no big deal the only reason why i started from a was if you observe in this question the supports are there almost at the two ends it is an overhang on one side so therefore uh, whichever way i start i have to calculate the supports unless i calculate by i cannot move ahead now so let me first tell you briefly if i were to solve this problem so solve the same problem this is the last class problem by starting from the right side not from the left side now where would such a thing be useful this will be useful if we have a cantilever on the left side if there is a cantilever beam which is loaded on the, and the cantilever is on the left side then what will happen is the unknown reactions and the unknown moment will all be on the left side and if we start from the right side then these unknowns you don't even have to evaluate of course if you have evaluated them and you work them then they help you in getting verifying your correct answer but let's get back to the same old problem which we had so we had a 20 kN force like this we had this beam here there was a 50 kN force there was a 40 kN force 
in a 10 kilo newton force so all forces in kilo newtons this was our loading and if we start from the nd so now the first thing i will do is i will just call the coordinate as x star the reason i am calling it as x star is because i have to make a difference from x which we had taken so we start from x star at zero there is a load of 10 newtons and then nothing happens till x star becomes 2 so we start from zero and we go till x star is 2 so now let me draw the cut section of the beam i have a 10 kilo newton force this distance is x star and this is less than 2 so therefore there is nothing else which is coming on the cut section now we have to be careful in the cut section now the shear force v has to be shown as upwards why because this is what our sign convention is if we cut a section from the right and upward v is positive and similarly the bending moment which we show this is shown as clockwise because cut section is the right section now once we have this all i have to do is i just write my equations of equilibrium sigma fy is equal to 0 this will give me v is equal to minus 10 and sum of moments is equal to 0 this will give me that when i work this out i will get or so then i will get moment is equal to 10 times x star so now when i make a plot of this what i will get is i am starting so now you realize we are starting from this end so let's draw the shear force diagram the bending moment diagram so we are now starting from this end 2 4 6 so between 0 and 10 shear force is minus 10 so this is v and the bending moment you saw was 10 times x star so that means it will start from 0 it will go up to 10 so this is 20 so this is the bending moment diagram so this is x star is from here x was from here it really doesn't matter so this is how we draw the diagram for shear force and bending moment let me continue ahead now when i go so this was for my first this thing when x star was that is from this cut section i was between 0 and 2 now i will go to the next point which means let's keep this in focus now x star is between 2 and 4 so once again x star is being made clear it is from this side it's between 2 and 4 so if i draw the cut section i have 10 i have 40 this distance is 2 this total distance is x star and once again as before this is v this is m so what you have to keep in mind is with the correct sign convention you show the v and m now you do sigma fy is equal to 0 so this will give me v minus 40 plus 10 is equal to 0 and this will give us that the shear force v is equal to 30 and when i calculate moments m moment is like this so we have moment m is equal to 10 times x star minus 40 times x star minus 2 so now if we have to plot the diagram we calculate m at x star is equal to 4 this is equal to 40 minus 40 into 4 is 160 plus 80 so this is equal to minus 40 so now what i'll do is i'll go back to my bending moment diagram the value of v goes from minus 10 to plus 30 so at this point it will jump on to a value of 30 and 
the bending moment now it starts from this value and it reaches a value of minus 40 at x star is equal to 4. So, at this point the value of bending moment is minus 40. So, therefore, I draw a straight line between these two points. This is minus 40. I hope I have done my calculations correctly. This is the shear force. And then I can continue from this. The next one. So, this is from here till 4, I will get this value. Now, at 4, we have V is equal to 50. So, then that means this will come down by 50. So, there is 30 here and it comes down by 20. So, this value becomes minus 20 here. This value was 10, sorry. So, this will come down till here. This was minus 10 here. This comes down to minus 20 and the shear force goes like this. And the bending moment we realize will be a straight line and this will go from this point to the origin. And if we compare the bending moment diagram, this is the same diagram which we got. So, we can either start from left or we can start from right. It does not make a difference. The only thing we have to keep in mind is if we are starting from the other end, then we have to choose a proper uh, sign at the cut section. Okay. So, this was the question of whether we make a cut section from right or left. Now, let us move to slightly more difficult problem on the same topic of shear force and bending moment. If we have a distributed load, <coughs> that means let us have a look like this. On the beam, I have a continuous load. I give as W of x. Now, this W of x could be any type of distribution. It could be straight line, it could be a flat line with zero slope or straight line with a positive slope, negative slope, which is a called a linear loading. It could be a quadratic loading, it could be a cubic loading. So, we are taking a general distribution which is W of x. And this is force per unit length. So, keep in mind, whatever be the shape of W of x, the units of W of x will always be force per unit length. So, this is force per unit length or we can say in Newtons per meter. So, here what we do is, in any problem where we have a distributed load or a continuous function, we choose at a distance x on the beam, x is a general distance, we choose a very we choose an infinitesimal section. What is the meaning of infinitesimal? Very small, do not confuse it with infinite, it is sorry. Even I wrote the spelling wrong. It is infinitesimal. And this is the opposite of infinite actually. Or almost the opposite of infinite. A very small section is what we call as an infinitesimal section. Now, since our section, the beam is a length section. The infinitesimal section will be, we say infinitesimal section of the length of the beam. And what we do is, we denote this small section as length delta x. So, this is a standard trick or standard way to derive equations when we have a continuous distribution. You will see this in all your courses. You will not see this only in mechanics. You will see this delta x or sometimes if we are talking of an area, then we will take an area which is called delta a. And uh, for the infinitesimal section, let me write this. The symbol we use is delta or delta or d. These are the three symbols used. And in this context, they may be interchangeable. We use delta x, 
डेल्टा एक्स और डी एक्स समटाइम्स मैथमेटिकली प्रिसाइज पीपल विल नॉट लाइक टू यूज डी एक्स दिस दिस मीन्स अ डिफरेंशियल एलिमेंट एंड एक्चुअली द इन्फिनिटिस्पल सेक्शन इज अ डिफरेंशियल एलिमेंट सो एंड दे मैथमेटिकली प्रिसाइज पीपल विल से डेल्टा एक्स विल बिकम डी एक्स इन द लिमिट डेल्टा एक्स गोज टू जीरो बट यू कुड थिंक ऑफ दीज थ्री थिंग्स एज इंटरचेंजेबल सो नाउ हियर वॉट वी हैव से वी हैव अ बीम ऑन विच देर इज अ लोड डब्ल्यू ऑफ एक्स सो एट अ सेक्शन एक्स फ्रॉम वेर एवर अवर ओरिजन इज वी चूज अ स्मॉल लेंथ ऑफ द बीम विच वी कॉल विच इज अ वेरी स्मॉल लेंथ सो आई एम शोइंग दिस नाउ बाय रेड एंड द लेंथ ऑफ दिस वी कॉल इट एज डेल्टा एक्स so this is an infinitesimal section next what we do is we draw the free body diagram of the infinitesimal section of the small section i draw the free body diagram now i have i'll blow this up this is delta x and on this what i have is the external loading which is coming in is basically from the cut section from w of x at the location which is at x from the origin and delta x in extent so this loading on this is w of x now what happens on the two cut sections on the two cut sections there is a cut section at the left a cut section at the right these are cut sections so what will come in the free body diagram here let me now ask this to a particular class so let's just have a look at this maybe let's ask z a view this is your okay uh, which one guest to yeah let's have a look at this is this working can i go to there nobody is there okay let's ask somewhere else <laughs> okay r r i t r n is it there okay somebody is there okay i would like somebody to please answer the question which i am asking uh, we have r i t r n please somebody come to the mic can somebody there come to the mic please one of the students or i would like so that i can at least get a feedback of what is going on on the screen you can continue to project this w of x picture which i have but i would like to see somebody from rit rn is somebody there yeah please answer please take the mic hello can you hear me i want a response from you please rit rn ye kaun sa what is it called is there is it a yeah this group i don't think that they are understanding that i am trying to get to them i'll just oh you don't know okay rit rn that is the short form yes this classroom i can see some students there is a Uh, can you project that on the screen so that they'll know they are the ones i'm talking of okay yeah somebody has come now okay yeah please answer my question yes ma'am will somebody from this group answer me no let's go to some other center then it was your chance to come in limelight for a few seconds you miss that okay hello yes please okay hello ya yeah. hello sir yes hello uh, 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 hello ya yeah, which college is this please it is public college of engineering sir okay 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 now my question was i let me first come to my question i'll listen to you a bit later i have drawn this free body diagram i have shown w of x 
Now, what should I show? Is there something missing at points A and B in the free body diagram? There is something missing at A and B. That would be, I think, to be normal reaction. I don't know what you call it normal reaction or what, but there is, uh, you know, this by R. And it goes to the uh, upwards. So, I mean, uh, this is what we call it normal reaction kind of a. Normal reaction you're saying. Now let's okay. Let's look at the full picture. I'm putting the full picture. Now in this full beam, the supports are at the end. My points A and B are near the red arrow. I am drawing the free body diagram only of the cut section A B on this delta X section. So now what more should come in at point A and point B? What should I show here in the free body diagram? Uh, no, as where a. will the reaction come? Why are you calling it a reaction? Reaction is from an external support. Please word it again, word it correctly. What will I show at A? Where will the reaction come? At A, there is no external point on the beam. You uh, what topic are we doing? Okay, what topic are we studying? Uh, it's shear force and uh, moment. So when I cut a section, A is a part of the cut section. At the cut section, won't the shear force come? Won't a bending moment come? Yes, that's, that's it. That's a... So that is the answer. That at A and B, I have to show shear force and bending moment. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And shear force, uh, if it's going up at a bending moment, in proper direction, I think, and uh, that is the opposite at B. Correct. Very, very correct. At A, the shear force will be shown as going up. And the bending moment will be clockwise. Why is that so? Because A is a section on the right, on the right of the beam. Whereas B is a section which is cut and the remaining part is on the left side. So therefore at B when I show the shear force on B will be shown as V and the bending moment will be shown as counterclockwise. Now how do I distinguish the shear force at A and shear force at B? I wrote the shear force at A as V at X. What should I write for the shear force at V? V at which point? I have to write V at X plus delta X. Is that correct? Okay. And similarly, this moment, I will write it as moment at X plus delta X. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let us, we will continue ahead now. Does everybody follow this, please? This is what I am trying to explain and this is what we will do in any general problem. We draw the free body diagram of the part we are interested in. If there is any cut section, at the cut section, we show shear forces and bending moment. Now, the point A is at a distance x from the origin. So, therefore, I write that x. And because the point A is a what we call as a negative phase, on this, the shear force is shown as upwards. The bending moment is shown as clockwise and this is M of X. Point B is also a cut section. At point B, we show the shear force as downwards. We show it as V and we write it as V at X plus delta X. Why? Because the location of point B is X plus delta X from the origin. And similarly, the moment which we show, we show it as counterclockwise moment because that is the sign convention that is positive for such a phase. We write it as m at x plus delta x. So now, this total loading is w of x is the load per unit area. So how much is this force? What is the total force on this section, on the infinitesimal section due to W of X and because this is load per unit area, 
it will be equal to w of x multiplied by delta x because the length of this element is delta x and so what we are assuming is that w is the same as w of x actually w is changing from x to x plus delta x but because we are multiplying by delta x any change of here will give rise to what will be called second order terms which can be neglected so the total force here is w of x delta x and what we realize is that this force acts at a distance of let me write it on the new sheet what we know is this force will act somewhere between a and b we do not know its exact location why because i don't know what is w of x if w of x was a flat load constant load then it would have acted at half if it was a linear load like a triangle starting from zero then it would have acted as two thirds but all i can say is it will act somewhere between a and b so therefore i can say it acts at a distance of beta times delta x from b where beta lies between 0 and 1 don't get bogged down by this what i'm saying is it acts somewhere between 0 and 1 i can even take this half but i'll just to be mathematically rigorous i will take this as a fraction beta where beta lies between 0 and 1 so now let me do a force balance sigma fy is equal to 0 when i do that what i will get is v of x minus w of x times delta x minus v of x plus delta x is equal to 0 and let me take things on the other side so what i will get is v at x plus delta x minus v of x is equal to minus w times this is what i get from force balance and what i will do is i will take this delta x and i shift it on this side so when i take it on the other side what i get is v at x plus delta x minus v of x divided by delta x is equal to minus w of x and then as is usual in all these problems we take the limit when delta x goes to 0 so we get the left hand side becomes the derivative we get dv by dx is equal to minus w of x so this becomes our first formula that when we have a distributed force then the derivative of the shear force is equal to the distributed force and what we can do is if i integrate this so we have dv by dx is equal to minus w of x so what i can do is i can write dv is equal to minus w of x dx and we can integrate it on beam suppose we start from a distance x0 where the shear force is v0 and we go to a distance x where the shear force is v this will give me v minus v0 is equal to minus integral x0 to x w of x dx this is when the shear force when the w of x loading is pointing downwards if w of x is upwards then it will be in the opposite sense so this is the uh this is the expression which we derive for this now let me once again show the infinitesimal element we had v of x we had m of x we had 
v of x plus delta x and we had m at x plus delta x and this was effectively we had a force of wx delta x acting at a distance of beta delta x. I have replaced the force due to the loading, infinitesimal loading by its equivalent w of x delta x is the force and the distance between these two points as we said is some fraction beta multiplied by delta x. The fraction lies between 0 and 1. So now this was point B, this was point A. I take sum of moments about B. I can take moments about A. I just take it about point B is equal to 0. So now when I take moments about this, so what I get is M at x plus delta x. Then I have, I am taking moments about B. Then I have this term because of W of x which is in the same. So then I get plus W of x delta x multiplied by beta delta x. Then I have V of x is in the opposite sense. So I have minus V of x times delta x. And then I have the moment because of m. So then I have to take minus m at x is equal to 0. So these are all the moments about point B. When I take moments about point B, moment at x plus delta x comes into picture. The moment of this force, V at x plus delta x about point B is 0. The moment of the equivalent force is W of x plus delta x times beta delta x. The, we can't ignore the moment due to V of x. That will be equal to V of x times this length delta x. And we have the moment M of x. So sum of all this is equal to 0. So now when I divide everything by delta x and take things in the right perspective, I get M at x plus delta x minus m of x divided by delta x this is equal to v of x minus w of x times delta x times beta okay so now i have rearranged all the terms and divided everything by delta x notice the term containing w of x still has a delta x because it had a delta x square to start with. There was a delta x here, there was a delta x here. When I divide by one delta x, one of them goes away, the second stays. Now when I take the limit, delta x goes to 0. Then what happens to this term? In this term, we have a delta x and when this goes to 0 because we have a product and we know beta is not very large. Beta is a fraction between 0 and 1. So this whole term becomes 0 and what we get is the left hand side becomes the derivative of m. So we get dm by dx is equal to v of x. So this is our second equation. And what this tells us is that the derivative of the bending moment is given by the shear force. So now if I want to get m so once again I do x goes from x0 to x the value of mo moment at x0 is m0 so the, from there it becomes m so therefore it becomes m at x minus m at x0 which we have written as m0 this is equal to integral from x0 to x v of x dx. Now this is just a mathematical equation but this equation tells us one very revealing fact about the bending moment diagram. What this equation tells us is that dm by dx is equal to v of x. Now when The derivative of a function is equal to 0. What does this imply? This implies that f is either f is 
maximum or minimum assuming that f is not constant so f passes through a maxima or minima at the point where df by dx is equal to 0 now dm by dx is equal to v of x and if this is equal to 0 means that when shear force v passes through 0 m passes through or m is at a local maxima or a minima which means the maximum value of the bending moment or the minimum value now minimum value if it is in negative terms could also mean the maximum value of the magnitude of the bending moment when that will be attained when the derivative of m is 0 that means when v of x goes through 0 that means in a shear force diagram when v of x becomes 0 at that point the bending moment will attain either a maximum point or a minimum point and therefore its slope will change because it is 0 at that point before that it will be positive after that it will be negative or the vice versa and that is how we will get a local maxima or minima here so we have got these two expressions that dv by dx is equal to minus of w and dm by dx is equal to uh, shear and these facts also let's learn one more thing about the bending moment diagram we have shown this expression m of x minus m of x0 is equal to integral vx what is the physical meaning of the integral let me get back now maybe let's ask someone okay v c a p oh, there seems to be only let's go to some other place ah hello sir yeah mike is no mike seems to be off sir mike is off your mic is off could you please put your mic on I think we are not able. We are not able. Let maybe we'll try somewhere else. Anyway, we seem to have only one person there. Let's go to a class. Okay, GHRC. Let's see. Khali class. Khafi poll khul jati hai bich bich mein karne se hume. Oh, there was a red thing on the mic. At least there one teacher was there. Okay. Uh, see Pune, let's go back. I think this is one of the uh, favorite classroom of mine. This is one of the favorite groups. Always I find students at C Pune. Let's go. Yeah, cheers to you. Okay, now will somebody answer my question? I okay, yeah. That's okay, you can put me. I think the mic is showing off. I don't know. Their audio is off or off? They have not started speaking. Okay. Anyway, it's nice to see you people at CE Pune. Are you fine? Okay, good. Okay, thanks. Okay, one of the students, please. I was asking the physical meaning of integral. Can anyone tell me? If I have integral f of x dx between two points A and B. What does it tell me? Area under the curve. That's right. So now, okay. So let's continue. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. All of you know this. I think you are a very serious class. I thank you for your efforts. 
ओके या बट प्लीज बी सीटेड प्लीज द लेक्चर इज स्टिल ऑन वी हैव नॉट कॉल्ड इट ऑफ सो डोंट रन अवे बट आर यू फॉलोइंग द क्लासेस हैज एनी वन सेंट एन ई मेल टू मी आई एम गेटिंग अ लॉट ऑफ ई मेल्स हैज एनी ऑफ यू ट्राई टू कॉन्टैक्ट मी ओके डिड यू ट्राई द प्रॉब्लम ऑन विच वॉज पोस्टेड ऑन द क्यू ट्रिपल ई मैकेनिक्स फेसबुक साइट द ट्रस्ट प्रॉब्लम आई हैव पुट अप अ ट्रस्ट प्रॉब्लम आई हैव ऑल्सो पुट अप इट सोल्यूशन सो प्लीज ट्राई दैट प्रॉब्लम ट्राई टू सी इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट and give your feedback to me you can put your feedback on the site send it by mail yeah please say something somebody was saying okay you people are looking to me i can see you very closely it looks like as if you are my own students students whom i am teaching here okay so let's move on now so the physical meaning as most of you know most of you have already said the physical meaning of integral is area under the curve so what this tells you is if you have drawn the shear force diagram cor correctly all you need to do is you need to calculate the area under the shear force diagram and that will tell you the value of jump which the bending moment diagram takes and that actually we can illustrate from the example which i did today itself i drew a shear force diagram let me get to that page i had solved this problem today okay now you can see it from here we start from this end the shear force here was minus 10 and it this total distance was 2 so 10 multiplied by 2 was 20 so the bending moment at this point was zero and from here when i come to this point the bending moment becomes equal to 20 so the area under the shear force diagram gives us the bending moment value so the bending this area which we had here the value of this this was 20 so that or let's maybe let's start from this end if i started from this end this was minus 20 this went to zero this was plus 30 so now if i calculate this area we start from this end this distance is 2 so the area of this rectangle is 40 20 into 2 40 and this is dv we have the expression dm by dx let me see i think it was not minus v i just goofed up that is my all mark i have to do that at least let's just get to this so we had dm by dx was equal to plus v so here v was minus 20 multiplied by 2 this is minus 40 so we start from m is bending moment is 0 and this value here is the area under this so this becomes equal to minus 40 so the value of bending moment at this point is minus 40 then look at this area this is 30 multiplied by 2 so this area is 60 this area was 40 so therefore when i look at this i have plus 60 minus 40 so the value of the bending moment at this point will be equal to 60 minus 40 that is 20 so from minus 40 to 20 we have to do and if this is a straight line uh, a flat line its integral will be a straight line so i get to 20 and then from here to 0 so therefore these expressions which i have written i have written two expressions dm by dx is equal to vx and dv by dx is equal to minus w of x can help me in plotting with my diagrams so let's write these expressions again dv by dx is equal to minus w of x and these facts are also used and they are particularly useful when we have a uh, distributed force let me take the one more example here i'll call it the last example in the shear force diagram topic we divide this into three part that's how this is we have 
a beam like this. I am taking example now which is slightly more involved has got multiple concepts so that you understand both these concepts. What we have is at point B there is a load of 10 kilo newtons. Then we have a uniformly distributed load 2 kilo newtons per meter. And at point C, let us say we have a bending moment which is equal to 2.5 kilo Newton meter. Actually in the original problem what I had was at point C, there was a welded point on which a force of 5 kilo newtons was acting. So now when I effectively shift this 5 kilo newtons force to point C, I will get an axial force of 5 kilo newtons and a bending moment which is equal to R cross F. So 2.5 kilo newton meter acts at C and point D and again I have AB is equal to BC is equal to CD is equal to 8 meters. So let's just concentrate, let's look at this problem. Uh, we have a beam ABCD and end A there is a pin joint at B two things are happening, there is a force of 10 kilo newtons and we start a uniform force of 2 kilo newtons per meter and this uniform force runs from B to C. At C, in addition to this force ending, we also have a concentrated moment 2.5 kilo newtons per meter which is in the clockwise direction and D there is a roller support. So this is the problem. So now the first thing we will do in the solution, we draw the free body diagram of the full beam. The first part of the solution will be to draw Now, when I draw the full free body diagram of the full beam, what do I do with the distributed force? I replace it with its equivalent. So this 2 kilo Newton per meter force, so we have this force we replace it by its equivalent which means equivalent is equal to 16 kilo Newtons 2 into 8 and it acts at the midpoint where it is acting so that means what I will do is I will put a force of 16 kilo Newtons and it is at a distance of 4 meters from B. It is not supposed to be midpoint of the whole beam. It is at the midpoint of, it acts at the midpoint of BC. So now in this free body diagram, I will do sigma Fi is equal to 0 and I will take sum of moments about D is equal to 0. I will ask you to do this yourself and check it out. When you do it, what you will get is A sub Y is equal to 14.56 kilo Newtons and D sub Y is equal to 11.44 kilo Newtons. So this is up till the second decimal. 
so we get a y and d y this is what i get for the reactions so now when i have to draw the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram i would leave these drawing the free body diagram of this as food for thought maybe i will interact a bit more with you try to get you to going into this but the exact solution the final solution of this i will do in tomorrow's class in the next class that is on thursday where we'll wind up this topic but let me just let's just try to think how we will work on this then warning when we have done this when we draw this shear force diagram we have to be careful of the distributed loads so this is my loading so if i plot my loading w of x on the beam what i get is i get a force of 14.56 i get a force of 10 kN and then i have a uniform force of 2 kN per meter at this point i have a moment 2.5 kilonewton meters and i have 11.44 this is my actual loading on the beam without any equivalents so if i have to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram we will start from 0 to 8 think about it that means i am taking a cut section somewhere here what is the shear force what is the bending moment for this i could use the rules or notionally i can just have a cut section here i think in my mind i have a shear force v which is acting downwards a bending moment which is acting clockwise so what is the shear force v okay now maybe i can interact now some other college see pune is my favorite college but we'll go to some other college because uh, okay v c a p probably there's only teacher acha we can't get is your mic working sir hello no we can't get the mic okay then some other college vc equitably okay vc they are not publishing vcap okay same place how come rit rn also we got the same place how come it's the same okay some other place okay where otherwise we'll go back to if let's try let's try each of them i don't know why dct okay yeah hello yes please i would like to interact with someone please take a mic can you speak is the mic working okay who would like to talk any one of you doesn't matter even if the answers are wrong it doesn't matter we are all learning yes okay can you hear me yeah i can't hear you can you say something please hello no it is not coming let's try and try again aapki awaaz nahi aa rahi hai hello no okay 
लेट्स ट्राई समवेयर एल्स नहीं आ रही ओके समबडी अदर प्लेस नो नीचे कहीं नो ओके आई कांट लेट मी जस्ट देन वर्कआउट व्हाट यू विल गेट इज v is equal to 14.56 and the bending moment will be equal to we have this force p this distance is x so therefore bending moment will be equal to 14.56x so if i start drawing the diagram in the shear force diagram if this is zero at 14.56 i will get this the bending moment diagram is the area under this so if this is zero it will be 14.56x so at x is equal to 8 this value will be 14.56 multiplied by 8 next we have to think and this is where i will start in the next class we will cut a section xx between 8 and 16 and between 16 and 24 try to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams and those who have drawn the diagrams please if you want you can send copies of your solution to me you can scan your solutions send them to me i am writing my email again sanjeev sanghi at gmail.com or what you can do is you go to facebook and there's an open group q triple e mechanics please upload it there as a comment or as a status and then we can discuss from there so and i will give you the answer to this full shear force bending moment diagram there are couple of catches we'll see how to account for the distributed force the other thing is there is a point moment here so what does it do to the bending moment diagram shear force diagram we have to see and that i'm going to explain to you in the next class thank you very much